Now, another aspect of, of regulator behavior, or I guess some of the regulator issues you can see is creep. And this is the most common issue I've seen in the field. Um, and creep is the rise in outlet pressure when there's no flow. So essentially a seat leak, right? And creep is typically caused by some sort of debris or damage on the seat. Um, and we see, you know, these are these are two pictures of regulators that had been returned to us. Um, and they represent very typical um, uh, debris that we see in regulator seats. And there's really two types, right? The one here on the right is, uh, you know, a lot looks a lot like a tubing burr or something like that. We see that um, quite frequently on system startups, right? You can imagine whole system is built. And maybe there's a pesky little burr still sitting in there. Now, as it zips down the line, the space between the seat and the poppet is very small to create those pressure drops. So um, that burr is moving pretty fast and it's going to embed itself in that seat, right? Um, causing a small leak path that is between the poppet and the seat. And even if you get some extra closing force and maybe you have a higher, higher inlet pressure, um, you still might not be able to fully seal and you'll see creep. Now, on the bottom left, you, you have a situation that typically develops over time, right? A bunch of debris is impacting the seat and embedding itself, creating all these little tiny leak paths that eventually, once there's kind of a critical mass, you end up with a, with a seat leak because the seat can't deform around that. So the reason why we worry about creep is protection of all the downstream components, right? So if you imagine this is a test bench um, and um, the testing is over, right? So we shut off the, the shutoff valve, um, but we have creep in this regulator, right? So we have a high pressure, you know, high pressure cylinder kind of thing. And um, there's seat creep in this regulator eventually over time um, or sometimes very quickly, but over time, this downstream section could creep up from 100 PSI to 120 to 170 to 250, you know, up and up and up, um, and eventually damage these gauges or whatever piece of equipment we have here. Here it's a flow meter. Um, but, you know, it, it really could cause some problems in the, in the system. So we want to avoid that if we can. And there are some things that we can do um, to avoid creep. Um, and one of them is to include some filters. Always a good idea. Um, regulators really like clean, um, clean uh, system media because there's, they can be sensitive to that, to that debris. Next is adding relief valves. Um, so just downstream of the regulator, it's always a best practice to add a relief valve. So you're protecting that system. And we see many people doing this, right? So it's, it's very common. It's, it's, it's absolutely required in some instances too. Um, and then where possible, shut off upstream of the regulator. It's not always possible, but where you can, um, that takes all of the shutoff burden away from the regulator. So um, regulators are not shutoff devices. Um, they will shut off, but they're designed with pressure control in mind, not pressure um, shutoff or isolation. And really the biggest distinction there is that unlike something like a needle valve where if you need more closing force you can you can turn that handle and you know even get some tools out if you want to and and really wrench down on that seat if you absolutely need to make a seal um, you don't have that luxury with a pressure regulator right so you need to um, you need to rely on that poppet spring and your inlet pressure force to shut off the regulator and that's all you get there is no additional closing force to be added. So if you can, take that burden off of the regulator and shut off upstream. 